That will have to do, I guess. If you want to play EA PGA Tour in a realistic simulation style, and you want your shots to be more consistent, or perhaps you're simply fed up with your shots ending up all over the place just like this, but you can't figure out why it's happening, then this is the tutorial for you. I'm Sim UK, and in this video I'll explain my current understanding of how EA Sports PGA Tour's new shot mechanic called Pure Strike actually works. I play on maximum difficulty at all times, that means the AI are set at 100%, all assists and HUD elements are turned off where applicable, and shot mechanics are set at maximum simulation level. And if you want consistency, this is the best way to play, although I understand that most of you play on a much easier difficulty level, and your gameplay experience is very different to mine. Pure Strike is all about small precision adjustments to your shot, and in some ways I actually think it's very clever. Your maximum power, your maximum overall power is controlled by the aiming circle's position. So if you can pull it towards you by 50% and then hit the ball at 100%, so a full strike of the club, that will give you 50% power. And you think, well, what are you moaning about then? Well, what I'm moaning about is quite often the game won't let you move that circle towards you, thus restricting you from lowering your power. So let's say a 9-iron is a little bit too much to play the shot that you want, but only by about 10-15 feet. So if you could just reduce the power by 15 feet, you'd be fine. And that's where Pure Strike comes in. Pure Strike has two metrics, backswing and pace, and for each club and shot type, they are different. So you'll have to learn how to play them each individually. So instead of controlling the power and distance of your shot with your swing, Pure Strike gives you what I call fine-tuning skills. So if you keep both the backswing and the follow-through speed in the blue, your shot should end up almost exactly where that aim and circle is. Even if your backswing and speed are reduced, it should still be pretty much right where you expect it to be. Unless, of course, your vertical alignment shot is wildly off course, then that would be horrific. That would be a slice or a hook. When you overswing or play a shot fast, you, that's when you can get into trouble, because when you're in the red, that does seem to make you more susceptible to additional factors like vertical accuracy and the wind. So finally, we've got shot trajectory. You've got fade and draw skills, and to be honest with you, at the moment, these seem completely useless. Not only are they inconsistent, it's hardly worth using them because there is a much better way, which I will show you in this video. When you're using fade and draw and it works, it works brilliantly. The thing is, the consistency is not there, and it's almost impossible to work out why your shot behaved the way it did. What does appear to be more useful, although not by much, is your shot height adjustment. Now, a low shot will reduce the wind impact, or you would expect it to. It doesn't really. And a high shot will give you a little bit more range, but make the wind more of a factor. But again, it doesn't really. You would expect the wind to definitely have more of, a, more of an effect when you're hitting the ball higher. Equally, if you're hitting a higher shot, you would expect backspin to work more, but it doesn't. And again, this is because of the limitations of your character's unlocked shot type capability. So basically, I think the wind is an arcade implementation, and it doesn't really factor in properly with the physics in a realistic way. Let's do some tests to see if you and I are any closer to understanding this or not. Thank you, Harry, for the sub. Much appreciated. So to begin with, let's just go with a basic driver shot with the wind behind us pushing us towards the bunker, and let's try a few straight shot combinations. Now, you should be able to guess what's going to happen with each of them, right? Let's hit a few variations, all with as close to dead straight as I can get. First, let's keep things simple, keep everything within the blue. Now let's try adding overswing. Let's try a faster swing, but we'll underhit it. Okay, good. So finally, let's overhit it and give it an extra fast swing pace.
So that's kind of exactly what we all expected, right? Let's try the all blue shot again. So that's fairly consistent with what we were expecting. If we compare all the shots together, they are all very similar in terms of they're all straight, some with slight variations on the vertical swing, of course, but effectively the game has recorded them as a straight shot. They've got the same wind and within seven feet difference on the apex. And when I say the same wind, I mean the wind is blowing in the same direction. I have no idea what speed the wind was. Maybe after a shot, it would be great if we just had that information to help us gauge the differences between shots. The first and last shot are even closer to being identical, so we can see that shots are consistent with what we expect when the wind is behind us. And we can assume also that the same applies if we have a headwind, except obviously the distance of our shots will be reduced. So with that knowledge secured and tested and proven, I would love it if you could pick what you think is the best shot in club for the next hole and see if you get it right. So here we are on Pebble Beach at the third hole. We have an unknown strength wind coming in from right to left, pushing us away from the flag. Furthermore, we have bunkers to the front and the left-hand side, and deep rough all around the teardrop green. The game starts us off with a 9-iron, which defaults to 143 yards, which is a good 10 yards further than the flag. Before I do that, though, let's start off and hit some dead straight shots with various clubs and see what the wind effect is. Bear in mind, this is an advanced, highest difficulty challenge with everything set to maximum simulation and difficulty, but I do not know what the wind speeds are. So with your understanding of the game, please write down in the comments which of the following clubs can reach the green. 8 iron, 9 iron, pitching wedge, or the 50 degree wedge. I'll give you 30 seconds to decide, write your answer in the comments section below. Okay, time's up, and congratulations, your guess was correct. Unless, of course, you didn't write your prediction in the comments, in which case, you should just leave now. So for all four of these clubs, they can all be used to reach the green, and they can do so in a number of different ways. I'll show you them all in a minute. But the last shot technique is the one which will completely transform your gameplay experience and boost your consistency. So make sure you watch to the end. Okay, so let's mix things up. Let's start throwing in a few different shot types, a few different angles, a few different opportunities and fades, etc. Let's start with the baby, the 50 degree wedge. Now obviously this is a very short club for this shot, and with the high loft that you get off this club, you would expect the wind to just destroy it. So we'll need to hit this with overswing and a fast paced tempo if we've got any chance of reaching the green at all.
We can adjust the loft and the fade in either direction and still make the hole. What we cannot do is get consistency with this shot, nor can we understand how and why the wind is affecting the ball flight. If we put the elevation high or low, it still doesn't really seem to make much difference. Now this is why so many people are getting frustrated with the game. I honestly think the wind is not calculated at all correctly, but it's implemented in, in an arcade kind of way. Let's upgrade the wedge. Now this is the club I would have chosen if I was sat in your place watching this. Basically because I know how easy it is to overhit my shots and furthermore how easy shots tend to roll on after they pitch. So the pitching wedge with its high loft and fade or draw makes a little difference to be honest should reach and sit and of course it does. But again, we're going to lack consistency with this shot. Now let's try the 9-iron. If you try and play the 9-iron using just the tools that are given to you by the game's interface, you're going to really struggle to get that ball to sit on the green. Most of the time, you will fling past it. Now if you increase loft, reduce tempo and backswing, it makes little difference really. And again, there's no consistency at all when using this shot. So now the A time. Using the game's interface, there was no way that I could consistently get this to sit on the green unless I just threw out some obscure accidental golf swing or got a lucky bounce. I think it's the game's interface that's causing 90% of my problems and possibly yours too. If you're a golfer of any average standard, then you know what a slice, a fade, a draw and a hook are. If you're a little bit more advanced, you'll probably know how to make those shots. But the good news is that we can use that knowledge in the game, even though it doesn't tell you that. So let's take matters into our own hands and start playing a few variations of diagonal shots using the 8 iron. And there you have it. Consistency. Now it's not 100% guaranteed. If I play the shot badly, I'm going to get a bad result. But at least I know why what happened, happened. Whereas when I try and use the game's interface, I am constantly scratching my head, trying to figure out what I did different. Now, because we cannot reduce the amount of power that we place on this club by more than a few percentage, because that's how the game is designed, it's actually quite tricky to consistently hit the eight iron soft enough in order to stay on the green. So the best club for this shot, as the game suggested, is a nine iron, but only if you are creating the fade of the shot yourself. I really hope this tutorial has been helpful and informative. If it has, please do leave a comment and a like. I have much more to explore and learn about this game, and I want to figure out the putting. I want to get greater control over my ball spin after pitching, and any tips, recommendations, or advice that you might have, then please do share it in the comments so that I and anyone else looking to get a better grip of this game can benefit from your insight. I'll be honest, I'm still not happy about the way the wind has been implemented, and I still feel frustrated by the lack of control I have over the power of my club. If I want to play a 50% power flop shot with my 9-iron, then I should be able to, because it, the reality is I've done it in real life many times. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next one. Bye for now. Oh, bad one. Get lucky, get lucky. Damn. Hmm. Well, at least I know why it went wrong, you know?
good effort. You, you still make mistakes, but at least I know what the mistake was and why it happened. I don't need to think about anything else. And as you can see, the wind is not affecting me anywhere near as much as it was when I was trying to use the in-game tools. Just playing proper golf in a simulated way really does work in this game. The only thing it's lacking, and I'm still not sure whether I like it or not, is that you cannot adjust the power by reducing the amount of pullback you, you throw at it. You're, you've got very small amounts of control over that, not a huge amount of control over that. It kind of works. It's very different, and it's a little tricky to get used to. But I'm certainly enjoying it more and more the more I understand it. How much I can say for sure. Goodbye for now. Everybody feel it come around with round with round. Everybody feel it come around with round with round. Everybody feel it come around with round with round. Everybody feel it come around with round with round. Everybody, everybody round with round with round. Oh yeah! Everybody in the front, front, front.